In this video, we'll be working with existing geometry from existing components uh, in the assembly to sketch and extrude a new component and to find its, uh, its joints and motion relative to the other parts. And this is a great example of Fusion 360's top-down design methodology, where by designing in one space alongside existing components, we eliminate the need to toggle back and forth between part files as we can easily drive component features based on the existing assembly. So once you've opened the file, uh, the first thing you want to do is edit the sketch that we have started here. You'll see a couple of circles there. And these circles align with these joints that they'll be making with these pins. And so if you look, that line is purple in the middle there on that first circle. And that's because that is connected to one of the circles from those pins. And so we projected a circle in there, and it's now defined by that relationship with the outside part. And we'll be doing that in just a second for our third circle. I just wanted to point that out. Purple means that it's connected to an outside piece and it references that. Um, so the first thing you want to do to make a circle up here is to actually go back in and edit this original sketch to add a circle. And this sketch lives inside of the rocker component. You'll find it underneath sketches and it's called Legacy Sketch. And by right clicking we can say Edit the Sketch. And that's going to bring us out to Edit on its Sketch Plane. I can then press the Home button again to get a good view here. And the tool that I want to use now is called Project. And the Project tool will take a body uh, I'm sorry, a profile from any outside component, body, or sketch, and it will project that feature into the current plane so that we see its profile there. And so I click Project under the Sketch menu, and if you look here, we want to make a circle that goes about the same circles that are here, that's concentric with the same circles that are here on our pins and bearings. And so for that center point, we just need any one of these circles to project, and so I'll just click on one of them. And you'll see here this purple circle that pops up with a purple dot in the middle, and again, that means that it's defined based on that outside sketch. So once there, I can click OK. And that kind of exited out of the project command. But the next thing I want to do is make a circle about this one that is the size that we need to continue the profile. And so underneath sketch, I can go down to circle and choose center diameter circle. And from this, I can start at that center point, which is defined by the outside part. And I can type in my diameter, which would be 35 millimeters. So now we've created a sketch of a circle that will be the outside profile of our rocker that will be here, and it's based on the center point of an outside part, which is really handy. So the next thing I want to do is add some outside tangent lines to these circles to get the profile that I need for the actual rocker. And so I'm going to do a front view here on the view cube and bring our sketch over here to the center. And if you look, it's these yellow circles that we've created. Those are the ones in our sketch. And I'm going to go to Rocker and right-click it, and I'm going to choose Isolate in the menu. This will hide all of the parts except for the Rocker component. Next, I'm going to choose the Line tool under Sketch. It's here at the top, or you can find it by moving down a little bit to the Line tool. And I can make tangent lines on these circles a number of ways. I can draw a line and then add constraints that make it tangent. Um, I can also click on the circle and draw in a tangent direction while I'm dragging. And that's going to give it an automatic tangent relationship and I can move it to a spot on the next circle that will give it a tangent relationship there as well. I can also hold down shift and click on the circle to begin a tangent relationship and hold it down while I drag to make a tangent on the last part too. Do the same thing for this one. I'm going to click and drag, make a tangent line, and do the same thing again on the other side. After this, we want to get a fillet here, a nice curve for our rocker, and so I'm going to go under sketch and choose the fillet tool. And by clicking on both of these lines, Fusion will go through and uh, cut off their excess pieces and add a nice fillet there at a diameter that you want it to be. For this design, we want 77 millimeters. That'll be the, the, uh, the profile that we need for the rocker. And I'll hit Enter to lock that in. And now we have the profile for the rocker that's ready to uh, add joints and extrude. And so I'm going to stop the sketch. And once I do that, I'm going to right click on the rocker and choose Unisolate. That's going to bring back all of the parts in the model as well. So now we can see all of them. Now the next thing I want to do is add some as-built joints to go between our sketch and the geometry outside of the sketch with which it'll be interacting. And so the first thing I want to do is use an as-built joint. Um, we learned a little bit about joints earlier in the last session, and joints are great for aligning and constraining parts. Um, with top-down design, it's really easy to make these designs off of each other so they're already in the correct places. We already have you know, the sketch to find off of pieces that are outside of it. And so if it's already where it needs to be, we just need to add a joint for mechanical purposes. I can go in and use an as-built joint. 
And by doing this, I can make a type of joint that I need. We want this to be Revolute, so make sure that says Revolute there. And we can choose our two components and then put a position for that joint, and that's all we need. So for the first component, I need to choose the sketch, which would be the whole rocker component. And for the second component, I'll choose this bearing over here. And now it's asking for position. So I can go ahead and click right in the middle of that circle where we first drew, and it'll show us a quick animation of what that joint looks like. And then I can say, OK. And that's our first as-built joint. We're going to do two more, one in the middle, one in the back. So I'll go up here and do an as-built joint. I'll choose the sketch, and I'll choose this pin right here in the middle. And then for my position, I'm going to choose once again the center of that sketch. And then I'm going to choose OK. And for the last one, we will again choose the sketch. I'm going to choose this outside pin that's out here. And for the position, I'm going to choose, once again, that center point of that circle. And then I'll say OK. So now that we have those joints, we can then go in and move the assembly a little bit. And you'll see how that sketch honors the assembly and it moves along those joints that we provided earlier. Now the last thing that I want to do is go in and go ahead and make this into a physical rocker from the sketch that we have. And so the first thing I want to do is come in, I'm going to hide my joints there for a moment. I want to come into the rocker and I'm going to choose this dot next to it. That's going to activate that component. And then I'm going to make sure I'm in the home view of the view cube. And I'm going to go to create and choose extrude. And the extrude tool will pull out a sketch into the bodies that we want. And so I can click on this center mass here, the outside circle on the end, the outside circle there in the elbow, and I'm going to choose the outside and inside circles of that top piece up there. Make sure new body is chosen, and for the direction, we want it to be symmetrical. If you'll remember, this uh, sketch is in the middle plane between these parts on either side, and so we're going to want it to extrude out in two directions. And I'm going to type in the distance as 24.125. And you'll see now it's blown it out to where we need it to be. And when I say OK, you'll see that we now have this body part uh, that's existing in the context of the sketch that we drew, as well as the parts outside of it. So the next thing I want to do is add a slit up the middle of that rocker to give some room for that suspension that's going down uh, in front of it. And then I'll click on the home view. And if I go to rocker, I can right click and say isolate. That's going to hide all other parts except for this one. And then I'm going to open up its sketch that says split here. I'm not open up, I'm going to show the sketch by clicking on the light bulb. And you'll see here we already have a profile drawn out to sketch across uh, to cut through this body. And so I'm going to go up to create, and I'm going to choose extrude. And I'm going to click on that sketch profile that we have drawn there. Now from here, I want to go through and say cut rather than new body. And I want my extents to be all. And you'll see there that it'll go through and show you all of the parts that it'll be able to cut through, which in this case is just the rocker because we've isolated the unit. And then I can say OK, which will give me that cut there through the rocker like we need it to be. Now, finally, what we need is to cut out um, a piece at the front here that has to do with the, uh, the pin that goes through it. And so if I go ahead and right click this and say unisolate, you can see there what I'm talking about. This pin and this bearing will sit inside of this rocker and go through it. Um, so what we've done is uh, done a thing that will let us show you how to use a Boolean operation. And so if I go into rocker, I can right click it and once again say isolate. And I can go in here now and say modify combine. And combine will let you go in and combine two bodies in, in a Boolean operation. And so my target body will be the rocker that I've made. And my tool bodies will be the split, uh, excuse me, the cut body that's listed here underneath bodies in the rocker component. So I can click on cut body there. And rather than join, I'm going to choose cut. And I'm going to say OK. And then you'll see that that body that we had set out for that cut has been cut into the rocker. And so once again, we're working with parts from the outside coming into the inside, and these are things that are defined based on the outside parts. And so this is really the essence of top-down design. It's going in, creating things off of things, referencing them, and building out your assemblies in one space. Uh, it's extremely efficient, very easy to do, and uh, is really one of the defining characteristics of Fusion 360. So once we have that, I'm going to go through and unisolate the rocker component. 
So finally, what I can do now is take a look at the rocket from both sides, see it looks like we want it to. And in order to unactivate this component, I can just activate the entire assembly up here at the top. And so now we see all parts are activated, we can see them pretty well. And now we can go in and move these parts, and you'll see that the assembly honors those joints that we gave it previously. And so in this one phase, we've gone through a sketch based on outside parts to um, joints that are based on those sketches and components, and then finally bodies that correlate to that without actually going through and making different parts in different files, bringing them in, updating them back and forth like that. Um, Fusion is a really great place to do it in one spot, design everything in relation to each other, and really pull out an efficient design process.